fellow traders, friends, family, members of Discord, YouTube subscribers. Today's video is everything about Thinkorswim, aka Toss, video 6 of 100. And it's actually going to be about more power in your watch list. And this is co-mingling what you can do in your watch list against concepts or ideas that are shared on YouTube. And in order to bring contrast to that, I'm going to show you a few things in YouTube. And then I'm going to show you specifically what you should be evaluating in your watch list. The one thing that you should use as the primary de facto that you must have in a watch list. And I will tell you, I have never seen this ever in a YouTube video. So. That should tell you something. So first thing I'm going to do is go over here to YouTube where I did a search. And the search was best stocks to trade. And the very first one I found was how to find stocks to day trade. And the channel is Trading Lab. And he's talking about low flow or this person is talking about low flow. And Again, I want to make it clear. If you're a new trader and you follow videos like this, you're doomed to fail, in my opinion. And here's my, my take on this. If you are a new trader and you're going to try to learn how to trade any stock with the low flow, there's a low flow on it, that means you're looking for stock with incredibly high volatility. And not all stocks are going to have that explosive move. In the fact, the majority don't. There are red stocks, and they've been going down for years, and they are all, typically almost all of them, end up bankrupt and out of business. And if you get into this and you're the bag holder type, you're, you're doomed to destroy yourself. It's a self-inflicting, self-form of punishment. I don't know why traders buy into this type of narrative. So if you're like the Timothy Sykes kind of guy and you want to do this type of trade, right, then by all means, go ahead. But it'd be better just to take your money out of the bank, go to the beach, and get a nice barbecue going, a little fire pit going, throw your money in there and toast your marshmallows. Because honestly, this is not going to get you anywhere. And, you know, I would say, as an example, that's one guru online who has been a fund manager and has a history of, failing at those funds and I don't care what he appears to be I don't care what he claims to say I just care about the history and history tells us everything we should need to know so if you're thinking about floats you know just go follow Timothy Sykes and come back to the channel when you're done and that's again I'm just it's not that I don't have a bad attitude I'm overwhelmed at the nonsense that I see in YouTube and I'm a little frustrated. I want to help people, and I just don't understand the, the never-ending supply of these people who tell you one thing, but can't make money out of themselves. So, all right, here's uh, Humble Trader, her channel. And what I did was, when I did the search here, I went ahead and clicked on that one, and then this one because they're the ones that said how to find stocks okay and then here in humble trader what she's saying is she's using finviz and by the way you have scanners at your scanner and toss and you can configure the scanner to do almost everything except for you can't do low float then again maybe that's because it's really dangerous anyway so here you can see that she's picking a market cap two billion under two billion <laughs> Okay, relative volume over 1.5, and then current volume 5 million, and the price under $10. So she's saying in this example, and this is the name of the title, this is her channel. If you want to go look it up, you need to buy stocks under $10. Okay, I, I'm going to tell you, this is the absolute wrong approach. I don't care who you are, I don't care where you come from, I don't care what you've learned, I don't care what you think you know about trading. If you believe that a lower price stock, gets you a better opportunity at making money, you give up trading right now. All right, let me show you why. Why all of this is nonsense. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and create a watch list here. And in here, I'm going to basically take all of this stuff out. So I'm going to take the net change, the bid, the ask, and remove them. Now, I'm, I'm just going to load any custom script here. It's not the first, it's not the custom script that I'm going to use for what I'm going to show you, but I just want to show you some problems we have with the custom script. And so the one that I'm actually going to show you, I'm not going to do that until I'm absolutely ready to, because some people are going to leave this video, and I would prefer they leave the video until I get to the meat and potatoes. I would rather those that are watching follow and learn rather than just come here for a dopamine fix, all right? So here, if I go ahead and I say, I'm going to go ahead and load, we'll go down here and load something like maybe the S&P 500. When we go down through the list, you can see you're okay. On the quantity on this uh, custom link, we don't have any notices or warnings. And that's pretty cool. Now, if I go over here and I go back, and I go down, and let's say I want to load something like the Russell 2000. Then I'm going to get custom expression subscription messages everywhere. So I can't even see what the custom script is revealing. And this is because TOS limits this on you. And they do this in a way that is really going to hurt you. All right. And I do not appreciate this at all. Anyway, let's go ahead and go for it. We need to get rid of all these watch lists because each of these watch lists actually has custom code in it. And we want to free up all of the spaces that we can because of the error messages we're getting. And I know this seems like work, but it's not that hard. And because what we're going to do is we're going to find things that we might want to put in a permanent watch list against things we don't want in the watch list. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete pretty much all of this. And I know it just takes a few minutes, and just bear with me. All right, we're almost there. But uh, now we're going to go back and load a watch list, and we'll say watch list, and we're going to go ahead and look at any watch list that we have or saved and in this case we'll do the youtube watch list now unfortunately here's another problem with toss even though you have the current workspace you can't save your current workspace right isn't that stupid i mean honestly this is the one thing i have asked for over and over and over since i think it was maybe 2014 and it still hasn't been done all right so i'm going to delete these three remove them and now I'm going to put the meat and potatoes in here I'm going to go ahead to custom and I'm going to show you the difference between the custom code that I'm going to use or the custom quote that I'm going to use and the non-custom quote so that's the ATR percent and then this is the APT all right and I'm going to load this one and I'm going to go ahead and show you this. And we'll go ahead and load. Right, we're going to go ahead and uh, we just put YouTube, but we don't have anything in that list. So we're just going to go ahead and go over here. And maybe, maybe this time we'll look at the 500, right? All right, so now if you look in here, you can see the APT, the ATR percent has given us a value and the ABTR are giving us a different value, all right? So this one's lower than this one, and this one is higher than this one, and this one is higher than this one, and this one is lower than this one. No rhyme or reason here, okay? So here's the problem, in my opinion. Here, with the toss default, default code, you can't change it, and it's referenced in ABTR. And ABTR is just the percent of ATR and it's in a 14 period average, but it doesn't, if you look at it like this, when the market opens, first thing, what is the value today? Today would be zero, plus the last 13 bars, so you would actually have a running average of 13 at the beginning of the day, and at the absolute end of the day, then it would be a running average of 14 period. So think about it, it changes as the day goes. 
So you really want to use a code like this watch list uh, script that I'll put down under the in the description area so you guys can copy it. This you'll be able to copy because there's no angle brackets. Uh, YouTube doesn't allow the use of angle brackets, so if there's an angle bracket, it would not allow me to post it. But this one I can. All right, when you load your custom script in here, whatever one you're loading, say you load 11, put make sure you change this to 11 and put 11 in here. This way you know what custom script you use, so if you ever need to go back and change it, you know what it is, you know what number it is, and you can change the number here, and it's very useful to keep track of that information, all right? All right, so this, this one is a problem, and again, that's my opinion, and the reason this is different is because here, what we're doing is we're taking the same 14 period, we're doing the same kind of calculation to get the ATRP, which is here, but we're just calling it data, and then we're saying, okay, let's plot the ATRP data of the previous bar. So that means the data is done. It's already got 14 periods. So it's actually truly an ATRP of 14 periods, which is better than saying plot this, which we'll not have at the beginning of the day of the 14th period. In fact, the ATRP would be wrong. And in fact, if you do the math, if it's off by one out of 14, uh, that's a pretty substantial percent there, and I'm not going to use that kind of problem with my math. So again, this is really important you use this. Now, remember, when you look at this list and where I'm going, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff in Excel that I'm going to do to show you absolutely, definitively, absolutely, which is the best stock in here to trade. Of the S&P 500, these are all good put in here because they're expected to be around. They're not expected to be filing bankruptcies. They're not expected to go defunct, right? These are safe stocks to trade. Now, if I trade a stock that costs $1,000 and it goes up 10% on, on a daily basis, it moves 10% and I've invested $1,000 and that $1,000 stock and it goes up 10%, I make $100. If I buy 1,000 shares at $1 each and it has a daily swing of 10% a day, then I'm going to make the same money. I'm gonna make $100 on my $1,000 investment. So the price of the stock is not relevant. It's the block of money. So remember, when you're trading equities, aka stocks, whenever we trade equities, which means stocks, ETFs, ETNs, that type of thing, we really need to focus on the block of money. All right, so I'm gonna take this out and I'm going to put this into Excel and I'm going to convert the 2.0% 2, 2 to the decimal value of percent because this is going to show up as 200% if I convert it in Excel. Really, it's gonna be pretty simple to show you and I hope everybody stay in tune because here comes the magic, right? The really cool stuff. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna sort it alphabetically just for fun. All right, alphabetically, I'm going to touch A. I'm going to press the shift key down and while holding the shift key down, I'm gonna scroll down and then I'm gonna press the last one still holding the shift key. Let go of the shift key, now press the control key and press C. That should copy it to the clipboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open Excel and I'm going to go ahead and paste it right here. Ta-da! And here is the value. And if, again, if I convert this ATR uh, percent value, if I format this into percent, you can see it's showing 200%. That's not right. So what we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and take this value of 2.17 and we're gonna divide it by 100, and that's the decimal form of percent, all right? And if we go look at it, what does it look like in percent? And so you can see this is now the correct format we need. Going to click on this corner, which will cause it to populate to the last one to the left. So if there's data along the side or this side, it will, follow, it will populate automatically all the way down. Click on that. Now I'm gonna hit control or just copy, go to my contacts menu, hit copy, and then I'm going to 
place my mouse here and I'm going to say paste the values. Now that I've placed the values there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this because I don't need it. And here I'm going to highlight this column, the alt, which, which highlights all of the cells. And I'm going to say format. And I'm going to change this to percent. So now we can see the percent value. All right. So, so far, hopefully you guys got this. And here again is the meat and potatoes. Let's assume you're going to invest, say, $2,500. Okay. And so here's the money you're going to invest. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just put this as currency. And I'll take the decimal point off. And again, we're just going to copy this down. Okay. All the way down. And so we're investing $2,500. It doesn't matter what the stock price is. It doesn't matter. And I'm not, let's not get anal here by trying to say, well, you can't exactly divide this into that. We're, it's not the point here. All right. So try to, try to stay focused on the message. Okay. And not the little tiny semantic issues that are really not a point. All right. So if we actually now take it this way, if we spend $2,500 on A and it moves 2.17% of the day, we can say, we can say it, this equals the investment dollars times the percent move in the day. Okay. So if we invest $2,500 and it moves a full 2.17, we would make $54.25. Now, if you think that's realistic, that's still not realistic. And I want you to think about it like this. Nobody really can hit the bottom and the top. So let's say you're able to get 66% of the range. Let's just use an arbitrary number. And so when we go look at the stock or the chart, and we're looking at, say, we go over here and we'll change this to intraday. It doesn't really matter what the aggregation period is. We're really looking from here to here. And what we're looking at is the range, right? We're looking at the range. The range is the lowest point to the highest point. That's what we're looking at. And let's say realistically, you're only able to get about 66%. So if you went, if you got in right here and you shorted it, you would have made money. If you would have got in right here, went long, you would have made money. If you would have got in here and went long, you would have made money. And if you would have got in here and went short, you would have made money. And you can see how many times you could have made money on this, right? If you actually just have some good price interpretation skills, possibly an indicator to help you figure out where you should get in. It just depends on what, whatever it is that you want to do. All right. And again, so let's take this. And instead of saying we're going to get 2.17 and 2,500, we're going to say, let's take this is 100%. If we could hit the top and bottom, we're going to now say times. 0.66 because I just showed you that's reasonable that's doable now we're going to go ahead and hit this corner and populate down and now I'm going to do something here to help you guys get the meaning here of why the most important thing you can have in your watch list is the percent of ATR and whatever format whatever platform you're on whatever you're doing it doesn't matter this is the most important Beta, now that's a joke. It doesn't work. It does not represent where the value is. Implied volatility, nah, that's a joke. Doesn't matter. Means nothing. This is all of those things you can use to try and formulate a picture of something that you might think is worth trading. But let's look at the reality here. Let's go ahead and sort this by the percent value. We're going to go over here and we're going to say sort and we'll do the smallest to largest okay and this is going ahead and keep everything connected in that row so expand the selection yes okay so now we can see the smallest is juniper and if we invest twenty five hundred dollars we're able to take in 66 percent of the range we can make thirteen dollars and 86 cents all right i'm going to go ahead and put in here a break in here so that we can actually see this i'm going to say freeze the pane and we're going to say freeze the top row so now if i scroll down you can see that's the least you can make 
And now let's go all the way down here. 500 of these. We're just going down, going down, going down. So if you trade SMCI in the same day and you're getting 66% of the range, you can now make $174.57 where you can trade Juniper. And again, you're proficient at hitting 66% of the range. You can make $13.86. Now you don't have to trade SMCI. How about you want to trade this one? That's $67.94. It's better than $13.84. So the point of this whole idea is in your watch list, if you want to trade and make the most amount of money for your block investment, you should try to trade those things that have the highest APTR percent or ATR percent. And that will actually ensure a longer likelihood of staying in the game as you can see some of these happen to be amd and myrna and nvidia right there's some really good companies in here tesla etsy so you can see that these ones are performing well and give you a better piece of the pie than trading something like jnpr right it doesn't make sense so i mean if you like macy's i mean macy's you're going to get 64 52 and over here, again, 1386. Let me go back to the chart just for clarity. Again, we took this entire list. We took this ATRP percent. And if we go in, and on mine, if you go in and look at it, which you're going to have, I'm going to put it again, I'm going to put it in the description below. This will be your code. Make sure you change this right here to your custom number. And the custom name make sure you put the same number this way you're able to track it use days leave this at last and then once you have this in let's look at an example of how you can trade how you can make money on this right so let's look at it like this here's the free market good things free market is pretty good would you trade spy honestly would you trade spy I, there's not a chance in the world I would trade spy. Spy is at the bottom of but spy is above this. I mean literally spy if we sort here by ATRP and we go all the way up, spy okay has a value really really low. Matter of fact, let's go see what it is. So let's not I guess, let's go look at it. And this is what amazes me how so many people think that um that you know something like spy is a good thing to trade if you look here the atrp of spy and we have to remember this is three minutes we have to go look at daily right you gotta always remember now the lower one you can see spy is at 0 0.90 0 0.90 you can see it's between here and here trading spy is a foolish thing to do people who think that spy is a good trade ah, no way all right it just isn't the truth it just doesn't work that way all right so this is the first thing a t r p i'm going to show you the second thing you need but before i do that let me finish this example of how you can actually trade and make money doing this so let's look at it realistically if you have good pre-market activity and you see pre-market activity and you use the pivot points of the bodies, not the shadows. So if you're in doubt or uncertain of that, you can do this initially, shut that off. So you don't see those shadows while you do this work. Here's a very clear pivot and here's a clear pivot. You're gonna go off of the bodies. And once you go off of the bodies, in this example that I'm giving you, right, just corner, and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so it's not as clear. And we're going to make this red. Why are we making it red? Because we're on the right side of price action with the price action going up. That means we're gonna take a short position. We're gonna extend to the right, and that means if we took the trade here, right, we're shooting for 66% of the range to the bottom. And that's often doable. And if not, if we don't do it this way, if we just take the next trend going down this way and we say, 
let's look at this and we're going to make this a smaller line. And now we're going to take it this way. So let's look at let's look at the range here, bottom to top. All right, so we're going from here to here as the range, okay? And so I'm just trying to make sure you guys understand what I'm talking about here. Here we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop this at the same place. All right. So now you can see 0 to 100, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a what's called a curve. And the curve that I'm going to add is going to be 33, right? And then I'm going to add a curve at 66. Okay, and my 33 and 66, I'm going to make those purple and purple, just for fun. We'll make it this purple and this purple. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so we're going to say save it as my default. So, and that's, this is just an example. I mean, it's a very simple example, and I'm just trying to drive home how you can make this work. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is take all of these indicators off just to make sure it's very clear. Okay, so now you can see I'm just using the same block. I'm going to take this here off, and now I'm going to move this over to here, my zero line. Okay, and remember I said you were taking 66%. You can see you hit the target, right? And then I said that would be for your short side. You would take the short side. Well, maybe you just, you're going to have to get it a little bit lower. Maybe this candle right here, right? Because this is a break of trend. and Or maybe you're going to be down all the way down here, right? And you can see that didn't make it, right? So you didn't make it. And sometimes you're not, right? But you're not likely to get stopped out neither. I mean, it's just realistically here speaking. And then here I said if we use this value, and then we would be shooting from that 100%. We cross that line, and from that 100%, 33% would be 66% this way. So maybe on this side, you get you don't get stopped out. You're still on the trade, or you just decide to get out of it because it came back up, and so you still have some win, or you know, trailing really stop either, or it doesn't really matter. But now you're going to go ahead and do this, and you broke this trend line, right of price action, downtrend, it's green. That means we go long. And we're looking for that 66%. So 33 this way, 33 this way. All right, that's each of these is 33. You can see it's broken into one third here, one third here, one third here. That's a negative 10, and that's a negative 10 over. If we took the trade from here to here, we would have made we would have made the trade. We would have got the trade. All right, it's pretty obvious, right? Then this is an example. I'm just giving you some examples of a way to trade, and you can. Build your rules around it and you can do all kinds of things. And what if we tried to take the trade here, broke this line? Let's try and see. So we can put this as zero, and you can see you would have made it to right, right here. We're taking the trade, and you can see you hit 66% there or 66% here. So yeah, maybe this trade didn't work out, but two others did. And so if you only lost, if you, even if you lost, say you lost a 20% risk and the target is 66%, you would have made, what, 66 times 2? You would have made more than the day's range. And this is my point. All right, that's one example. I'm just giving you a quick example of, of a possible way you can trade. I'm not saying to trade that way. I'm saying it's a possible way, right? All right, now let's go further. What else should we actually have in this watch list, right? I mean, we got to have something else besides this. So what other factor can affect the price? Well, I think the best thing to say is that spread. So if we go back and we were to add the ask and the bid, so we'll go ahead and look at this momentarily. We'll add the ask and we'll add the bid. And so when we add the ask and the bid, now we can go look at them. And if you look at the spread between these, you can tell what has liquidity and what doesn't. What is really going to be a good trade and what's a bad trade? And again, this is just uh, showing, you know, 183.87, 183.29. And then so you can see some of these spreads are pretty good. 
Well, there's another tool you guys can use, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Again, it's a custom quote tool, and what we're going to do is look at. So, what happens when we add cost? Here's the script for cost. Is it optionable? You know, is it an option or is it not? Right? And then, if, whatever. This is just kind of telling us a few things. And what we're really doing is we're going to calculate the slip. We're going to actually see what is the better choice here. All right. And so, you'll see when this loads up. Let me see if I can get this to actually give us some data. So, here we're looking at it and. Now let's see if we can actually make this work for us. So if it's condition zero, it's okay. So if it's condition is greater than zero. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change this code because this is primarily for puts. We're going to just say, well, if the condition equals two, uh, one or two, uh, or zero, we'll say if it equals zero. So I'm just going to make a quick change here. And I'm, you know, some of you guys are not programmers, so this won't make sense to you. The code that I put in the description should help you identify. All right, so what you're now looking at is if we're going to trade this, we can see what the cost is by slip. So if we're buying the share at 37.05, it's going to cost us 0.05% on slip. And so what is the worst thing? The ones that are zero, the slip is over 5%. You don't trade those, no matter what the ATR is. Because even if the ATRP, not ATR, if, even if the ATRP is good, the slip is making it cost prohibitive. So you don't want to trade that, right? So again, here's an example I'm going to sort. 4.97, you can see the bid and the ask, and you can, 569, 512. So even at 1.6 ATR, that's a terrible ATR as well. At $554, you have to pay 5% and slip to buy it. So the thing you really need to do is, if you're not going to use a cost script to actually tell you where the value is, you don't know whether you're getting a good deal or not. So here you can see at an ATRP percent of 10.58 with an 04 slip, that means there's a lot of liquidity. This is a good one to trade, right? And where others down here, all of these, you should really avoid. You just simply, this is like a fraction. It's like 0. 0.00001. It's still a positive number. So this is probably the best thing you could trade, AMD, because it's got virtually no slip. I mean, you can see 17911, 179.10. And in fact, that is, it's just, it's only a very small fractional part of a penny in here. So of course, it's the best one to trade. Now, it's the best one on that, but the, the price is ATRP is only 5%. And so we go up just a little bit and we look at what's a little bit better than that. Is there anything better at 10.53 at 0.04? If we go look at the profit we'll make on that and we subtract the slip out of the initial cost, you'll find that this is going to outperform this substantially. And this is just some basic math. All right, in this video, I've given you an example of the two primary things that you absolutely must have in your watch list and the two things you need to know if you're going to trade equities. Yeah, you don't need to know beta. You don't need to know float. You don't need to know industry. You don't need to know sector. You don't need to know any of that. What you need to know is what is the percent of the ATR value and what is the cost? In other words, what does it cost you for the trade? because of the relationship between the bid and the ask. And those are the two primary things you need to know. All other things are incidental. In other words, if we want to trade a sector that's going into sector rotation, a sector that's getting stronger, you're still going to use these values on that list that from that sector rotation scan you may do. And so again, you would pick the highest ATR percent value and you would pick the one that correlates with the best cost basis. So for you traders out there, this is everything about Thinkers from AKA Toss Video 6 of 100 more power in your watch list better trading in the future. My name is Kevin McMillan. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please, please, please comment if you like this and uh, subscribe, share, tell a friend. I don't think anybody's ever hit share and share because in the analytics it doesn't show that anybody's ever shared. Share it, tell a friend, and I'll let them know.
This is where you can learn how to really trade and how to optimize everything you're doing when you're trading to become the most profitable trader that you will be in the future. And all the tools you get here are tools that will be with you for the rest of your life. Not the nonsense that you see on YouTube that the next day you forgot about. This is real meat and potatoes trading. Everybody out there, stay green.